Hello and you're very welcome to the IT Sligo Virtual Open Evening. My name is Michal and I'm a Schools Liaison Officer here in IT Sligo. In this panel talk, we're going to concentrate on fine art, performing arts and writing and literature. And to help me do that, I've got three wonderful guests here. So we'll be talking to these in turn. And first up will be Una Mannion, who's a lecturer on our writing and literature programme. We'll then talk to Nicole Dolan, who is a graduate of our fine art degree. And finally, we'll talk to the well-travelled Darren McGranahan, who is a graduate of our performance performing arts degree. Una, Nicole and Darren, you're all very, very welcome. Now, now, first of all, just to point out to everybody before we go into the specific talks, that we do have a brand new 17 million euro building uh, in IT Sligo, and this is across our Yates Academy of Arts, Design and Architecture. So anyone who studies these three programmes we talk about today, or anyone who studies architecture, interior architecture and design, or creative design will have access uh, to this wonderful facility. So you'll spend most, if not all of your time, in this amazing new 17 million euro building, which will have a big performance studio with retractable seating, individual performance spaces, really importantly across the creative disciplines, individual studio spaces as well. I'm sure the guys will testify to that one. But just to point that out, that will it's already half open. Second half is expected to open at the end of this year. But without further ado, we'll crack on with our speakers. And first up is Una Mannion in our hot seat. Una, you're very welcome. So in terms of writing and literature, Una, what forms of writing and literature do students study? So uh, all forms, um, we begin with fiction, generally like uh, short stories, but students will also do screenwriting, playwriting, writing for television. They will do poetry, nonfiction. There's also digital storytelling, which I guess is more uh, like beginning to like visual essays and beginning to think about how pictures tell stories as well. Um, so there's a whole digital storytelling thread all the way through, writing for radio, so students do podcasts um, and do workshops with radio producers, as well as doing workshops with editors, et cetera. So yeah, all, all kinds of writing, as well Every as academic writing. Brilliant. Every, it sounds like everything's covered there. And I, I've heard students before talk about, the, I suppose, the creative and the immersiveness. Um, I, as a writing and literature lecture, I hope I'm saying that right, but the immersiveness of uh, this programme. So how are modules taught in that kind of creative, immersive setting? Yeah, so we would we would really value that idea of like the workshop or studio. Um, and you were just talking about the new build. And I just want to say that writing and literature students will also have studio space. So all the students, which is so important because it's very hard to go write in the library. So to have a space where you get your space that you go and you write every day and kind of arrive at the desk to write is we're really excited about the new build. Um, and it kind of really feeds into like the workshop environment of the classroom because classes are really writing classes. We might give a demonstration or look at other practices or the genre itself, but so much of the class is workshopping student writing and it's underpinned by a philosophy that students learn most when they're giving feedback to other students about their writing. They learn most about their own writing. And so it's a collaborative space. And, and really, um, it's great. Um, this year when I was teaching writing, sometimes before we got into the workshop, I realized they'd all already shared. Like before we even got there, they're already excited and sharing their stories um, before the workshop. Brilliant. And ju just on workshops, I suppose, there's um, workshops from industry as well, of course, in uh, um, guest lectures or guest speakers. And what I find really important is the fact that graduates will have a portfolio of work when they graduate. Yeah, so one of the, I, I guess one of the things that we've tried to do is really beginning to getting students to think about themselves as writers and so and inviting people from the industry and asking students to step into the fray to a certain extent. COVID has prevented us from doing the, the literary festivals that we did um, in the first two years. Um, you know, we went we went to festivals, we went to everything and did like full weekend work. Students might do like 10 workshops over the, from Friday to Sunday. Um, but we brought writers all the way through. So even like um, students who are doing contemporary Irish literature um, and maybe they're studying Clara Keegan and Mike McCormick. We run an event with Sligo Central Library called The Word and those writers come and our students ask them questions and there's a dialogue. We bring editors um, 
we bring writers, uh, producers, um, age, literary agents um, to the third year group. Um, so every week they have a guest speaker um, who's from who's from the writing industry, and it's 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 a small group, and they're that visitor is there and talking to them or doing a workshop with them, and we've it's been really positive in helping students, I think, begin to think about how they see themselves um, in terms of their career. Really important, as you say, and yeah, some great um, experts, I suppose, coming in there by the sounds of it. And in terms of work placement, students can also go on a work placement. Any of these or types of work placement students have gone on? So, yeah. Um, so, for instance, um, some students have worked with like marketing, um, like so Story Lab, which does all kinds of writing. But like we, we've had um, some students do work placements with um, so marketing companies like Story Lab that write content. Um, we had a student who did a place with, placement with the Image magazine, right. which probably most people are familiar with. And it was Baptism of Fire. They sent her out to do an interview straight away. They Her interview was published. Um, students have done in, uh, work placements with um producers with um in publishing houses kids own which is a publishing house based here in Sligo. a few have done placements with them so it's a really broad range um some online magazines um at the moment so yeah and and then our students in terms of where they're going we have students some students really want to be teachers so we've um students doing the professional master's in education. Um, some have gone on to do like journalism MA. And one of those students is actually working for independent newspapers now. She has her own byline, which is so exciting to see. Um, we have students who work, who are really interested in like that writing community, uh, writing and facilitation workshops, that kind of work. So we, we just have two years of graduates so far. So, you know, it's kind of, it's exciting to see what will, how, yeah. what will happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. It sounds impressive just even listening to that to hear about journalism. You know, all the different areas students can go into, even the I was going to ask you about that, but I'm glad you mentioned the likes of the PME where they can go on to become a teacher and so on. Like so there's a huge, as you say, you know, a huge amount of career opportunities and further opportunities for study opportunities, sorry, for students. Yeah, I mean, I can't think of any industry that doesn't value storytelling and writing, you know, like any industry, you know, so we need to be able to tell the stories about what, what we offer, what we do or our practice. So I think, you know, we, we, and so anything from cultural journalism to, you know, to marketing, um, and a lot of our students really want to, they want to, they know they want to be a screenwriter or they know they want to be a writer, um, but they also know that they have, that they have a raft of skills where they can apply those skills in, in other positions. And of course, with this programme, the beauty of it is, of course, SG249 is our full-time on-campus programme, but we also offer a fully online programme, Una, which is, of course, SG254. How does that work for students interested? Um, so it's it's very much like the on-campus group, and it's funny, I, you know, I had no experience of online teaching um, until the group started, and it's been, it's amazing. I haven't met some of the students yet, but it feels like a, it's a writing community, and um, it's and their experience I think will be quite similar to the on-campus group. They also attend, so we live stream the word events where we have the guest speakers um, coming the, uh, the author event, so they can watch that. They're part of it. We all go to it. Um, they also ask questions. They um, have done some of the interviews with the with the visiting writer. Um, the in terms of time commitment, there's there's face to face workshops quite a bit, but there's also some as what we call asynchronous. So there's some pre recorded elements that they can watch in their own time. But it is a full time course, and there's a lot of engagement and com a community. I, I just anecdotally, I was walking on the beach and I saw a woman who's on the online course. I'd never, <laughs> and I met her on the beach, and I was like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'd never met her in person, so... Yeah, but it's a great opportunity, so Jeff, for, as I always say, some people just cannot attend campus. So, as I say, yeah, great opportunity there for anyone who wants to study that. It's online as well. And last but not least, you know, before I let you go, um, you'll be glad to hear, but um, in terms of our lecturers, um, they're, I suppose, practising um, writers themselves, and I'm not sure if you're going to blow your own trumpet here, but multi-award winning as well, Una. Well, so, um, I think one of the brilliant things about our course is that everyone who's who's teaching on the course is a practitioner, and 
uh, and is actively publishing. And um, I, did, I actually brought like Alice Lyons who teaches poetry. This is her novel, debut novel called Una that was uh, shortlisted for the Kate O'Brien Prize beautiful and it, she's a poet and it, you can tell in the prose um tommy weir who teaches digital storytelling this book is called colleen um and he had an exhibition in the rha that went on to the dock and down to west cork it's been nationally and internationally recognized um for his photographs um really beautiful beautiful project my, my own debut novel was out um this past this past in 20 a year ago, yeah, uh, yeah, January yeah. 2021, um, and and has you know it, it did well, and so I think um, as a community of of we are Elska Rahul who teaches nonfiction and playwriting along with Rona Trench um, is. Um, she, she's, I think she has three books published. Jared Byrne has four books published. Keith Hopper, who's an academic, um, has uh, multiple books on film and uh, writes regular, regularly writes reviews. So it's very, a very active uh, community. Definitely, and just uh, just to point out, what one of the girls in our office read your book. She, she finished it actually at the weekend, and she was singing your praises, and she said it was absolutely brilliant. So yeah, I mean, thanks so much for your time. Um, I, I know you'll be staying on for the rest of this chat as well, but thanks so much for your time. Next up, we've got Nicole Dolan. Nicole, how are you? Good. How are you? Good. Thank you. And you studied, of course, fine art with us. You've since graduated, but why did you choose fine art at IT Sligo? Um, well, I guess I've always kind of been artistic myself, um, like in secondary school or uh, since a child, I've always kind of created different artworks, like constantly. And um, I always got involved in different murals that was going on in the local community. There was primary school murals going on and I used to like dedicate my summers to helping them with that. Um, and then when I've come to um, choosing a college course, I started looking at the different colleges that offered like art courses. Um, so I looked at a few colleges in Dublin and in the course IT Sligo as well. Um, and I went on my for my interview because at the time it was an interview and portfolio submission. And I kind of had a look at Sligo and like went out to Strand Hill and I just really fell in love with Sligo as a place, um, first of all. And also... Um, then the range of different disciplines that I would be fit to go on to study um, was really appealing to me. And you mentioned there the facilities, I suppose, and of course it's called fine art, but it's, it's a lot more than that, isn't it, Nicole? And you have access to ceramic photography, printmaking facilities and so on. Did you find that very beneficial? Definitely, 100%. Um, when I first went into the course, I was actually quite narrow-minded when it came to art. I kind of was more more appealed by like art history and um, I wasn't really as appealed by the contemporary kind of artwork. Um, but as I kind of explored the different mediums and facilities in the college, like ceramics, um, photography, um, printmaking, um, we had drawing and painting and there was like a lot of other different areas we could go into um, as well as sculpture studies um, yeah I kind of start, started playing around with them all and there were certain disciplines I didn't, had never like touched before that I didn't realize I ended up loving so printmaking for me would have been one of them I really loved etching and um, so I only started that in first year in college so I really progressed with that for the duration of my course then. And like, like even as you speak there, uh, Nicole, I can, I can tell just the, the broad range of modules, of course, that are on that course. But I know, um, having read your student story before, one of your course highlights um, was your European trips. And you did get away on a few European trips, of course. Yeah, um, I got to go to Berlin. That was amazing. That was actually in first year. Um, so we all went as all the fine art groups. So it was actually a great way to get to know the other years as well. Um, so I got to know a lot of the other fourth years and they were like talking about what they were doing and what their modules were in fourth year. So it really like it gave an opportunity to actually get to know the students in the fine art department a bit better and as well as the lectures. Um, but yeah, it was brilliant. It was a great trip. Yeah. And 
I suppose studio space, we mentioned it at the start of uh, this chat and I have a sister who's an artist in London and she's always said that studio space is massive, like you need your own studio space. And I don't think it was always something she had when she's grown up, um, but she does now, thankfully. But in terms of IT Sligo, having your own studio space, Nicole, and I suppose smaller class sizes and the supports of our lectures, that must be a massive help. Definitely. Um, like Sligo compared to some of the other art colleges had such a range of space like and different facilities like the space the studio space for me was actually one of the things that I really like appealed to me when I was looking at the course so it was like a dream studio space especially especially in fourth year for me there and um, I was wake- making uh, paintings five foot by six foot so I don't think nearly any other college would have the space to like let me create that size of work so it was kind of the studio space for me that let me flourish as an artist and create that size of work. Brilliant. And, and so important, uh, as you say, and uh, I kind of was aware of that, right? But I'm glad you mm-hmm. confirmed all that. Um, I suppose yourself, Nicole, you're joining us from Cork, um, is it, yeah. at the moment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're down in Cork now. So what have you got up to since you graduated? Um, well, since I graduated, I actually applied when I was still in my fourth year um, for a uh, professional masters of education in art and design in here in UCC and MTU so um, I'm currently in my first year of teaching then at the minute down in Cork so um, I'm loving it so far anyway it's going good so I'm teaching art in secondary school then yeah Brilliant, Nicole. Fair play. And it is an option uh, some of our students who take, of course, to become practicing artists, pursue uh, teach and stuff like that as well. And there's loads of career opportunities, of course. And further study, yeah. like yourself, um, the students can go on to when they graduate. Last but not least, uh, Nicole, of course, portfolio submission time is kind of around this time of the year. Your own experience, uh, did you find it easy to submit your portfolio to IT Sligo? Yeah, I definitely did. Um, I kind of, I suppose I had a few things already built up from just like loving art and doing a few drawings maybe at the weekend or for family members or stuff like that. Um, I also like put together all my kind of leave and search artwork. So I would have like took everything I would have created throughout secondary school, kind of put it together um, and maybe done a few extra drawings. Um, I kind of wanted to make sure that I had explored a few different mediums like drawing uh, a bit of maybe lino I had done in secondary school and a bit of clay. So I kind of had a range of different uh, disciplines in my portfolio, but definitely it's a definitely easy process. Um, it's just about compiling all your work and kind of being driven to kind of create work and being enthusiastic then for the uh, portfolio. Excellent. And I suppose anyone that is interested, of course, in applying to fine art and has any questions on their portfolio, of course, you can always contact us and just go to itslego.ie forward slash CAO and we'll be able to help you out and put you in touch with our fine art lectures. Nicole, thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Um, thank you. Last but certainly not least, uh, Darren McGranahan. And Darren, uh, thank you so much for joining us and you're joining us from London, as far as I know. Uh, and we'll get back to why you're joining us from London and where your travels have brought you because I'm hugely jealous of everywhere you've been, Darren. But to start off, um, in our performing arts degree, of course, it's a core first year or a common sort of a first year. And that was really important to you because I suppose you initially came to us to study a different stream rather than the one you ended up in. Yeah, I thought I wanted to be an actor. Um, And another thing, uh, because you don't have a portfolio or anything for uh, the performing arts course, I actually chose the course on a whim on the night before the CEO deadline. So I think I, I think I had Spanish and business done or something before that. And then I just decided for no reason to change to performing arts. And then I thought I wanted to be an actor. Um, and then I ended up loving the design module. So that's kind of what I stuck at. Yeah. And, and to be fair, like knowing, and we'll get on to this in a few minutes, knowing what you've uh, achieved since Darren, I think you've uh, definitely made a very uh, wise choice there. Now, in terms of the mix of academic and practical learning, did you enjoy that? Because there is, of course, a lot of practical in this program as well. Yeah, I think it's something you kind of um, realize later was a great thing. Because at, at the time, you're like, why are we learning about postmodernism? And then kind of when you, you're out on your own and you're designing things and you can kind of see these different elements from postmodernism or something like that, where you're like, oh, that actually makes sense in this kind of instance. And then you get inspiration from it. So it's kind of a good way to get inspiration from a lot of different backgrounds that you probably wouldn't be exposed to. 
And a lot of students who study performing arts with us, Darren, of course, um, will will graduate with their degree, of course, which is what it's all about. But apart from that, and I know something you've spoke about yourself is that your personality and especially your confidence can grow as well, which is, of course, going to be really important in the industry you're in. Would you feel that's the case? Yeah, totally. I mean, I think the first day I remember almost getting up and leaving because I was so freaked out. I think it was my first ever like group activity. And so then you're kind of thrown in with 24 new people. And then suddenly you're like on the ground doing like acting exercises and like collaborating. And so it kind of prepares you for the words of work and also just giving presentations. Yeah, yeah, really good that way. And yourself, um, Darren, you spent time in the Abbey Theatre, didn't you, in Dublin? Yeah. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, so I did that during semester six, which is the module where you kind of get to, it's kind of like a free play semester. And so I, of course, thought if I want to work in theatre, I should try and see what it's like to work in a theatre. Um, so I put together a portfolio and that met Leave, Neve Lunny, who was the head of costume at the time, and interviewed with her. Um, and so then I ended up, I was supposed to go for two weeks, but I ended up being there for like six or something, um, working on Alice in Thunderland, which was a kind of a drag version of Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> yeah, class. But some, some experience, I'm sure, there. And, yeah. um, and, and since that, of course, um, what have you gone on to do? Like there's, uh, once again, I, I know your background story and you've done some amazing things. So a, a glimpse into your life, Darren, and where it has taken you since you graduated. It's kind of a lot. I mean, I, I ended up in Hamburg after college because uh, the Abbey Theatre has a partnership with the Duchess Shakespeare House in Hamburg. So I actually went, decided to go there for three months um, and be an internship in this kind of insanely huge theatre. Um, and then after that, I moved back to Dublin, did Riverdance. Um, and then I kind of, I decided to go to New York and do a J1. And so I ended up working on the off-Broadway version of Hamilton, which was basically still, was only half written when I joined. And then I think the first night was the first time it had ever been run in one actual order. Um, and then I somehow managed to get onto Orange is the New Black, um, some other TV stuff, and then moved to Belfast when I had to leave in, leave America. Um, I worked on Double Murders and Krypton, and then I got bored of Belfast and then moved to Berlin. Um, and since then, I've done the Queen's Gambit there, and then I just finished John Wick before I came to London. And in London, I'm working on like the movie version of Luther. Amazing, Darren. Just even <laughs> some of the things you said there, like just the Queen's Gambit. I think, I think the start was in lockdown last year. I think it was. I just remember yeah, Queen's yeah. Gambit was the thing at that. Like Orange is New Black. I remember watching all that. Like yeah. it's hugely impressive. Um, what you've done, like honestly. Um, and I mean, both- I kind of, I kind of have a habit of just deciding to move somewhere and then like finding a job later. And so I think when you kind of have like a theatre film background, if you move to a large city, you can kind of I don't know, just turn up and see what happens. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's brilliant. And I like hard work too, Darren. Like you're obviously a hard worker. And something you did mention before was just taking opportunities, and you seem to be living by that. Yeah, I remember Tommy Weir, who Una mentioned before, kind of. I think it was like one of the last weeks of our degree, and he just told us to say yes. Um, his advice was just say yes to everything, and worst comes to the worst. Like you've done it, you've tried it. Yeah, no, it's it's brilliant. It's a great way to live, and as you say, like the fact you what you've worked on, where you've been, New York, Belfast, um, Berlin, like it's just, it's just it's honestly darn hugely impressive. Just so you know, before I let you go, um, the Irish Times just the just last week mentioned that performing arts this year is one of the top two uh, choices they anticipate. I know in Ireland even recently you had. Was in Colin Farrell and Brendan Gleeson over in Mayo. You've had mm-hmm. Game of Thrones in Northern Ireland. Troy Studios in Limerick working with Apple TV. Um, was it foundation? Yeah I was, actually, yeah, I was actually there for a week before the pandemic ruined it for me. There, I should have guessed. You were there. <laughs> but there you go. That's literally. But but it's it's big industry worldwide. And it's big in Ireland. I, I did read something that. COVID, once again, Netflix and Disney Plus, stuff like that. I know us as consumers, I'm always looking yeah. for new TV, but there is huge employment there and there's huge opportunities there, Darren, isn't there? Yeah, it's kind of insane. I mean, the pandemic really impacted us at the start. I think I didn't work until March of this year. And I mean, so, uh, since then, I haven't stopped. Um, and I mean, even in London, like there's so many, so much stuff happening. Like Netflix have studios here, Disney have studios here. I think all of the studios being bought out and even Shepparton, where I am now, is being expanded by like 20% or something. 
Amazing. Yes. Yeah, so, so, so there is huge employment there. As I say, I know myself, I'm, I, I'm just rinsing through series after series yeah. of stuff, always looking for stuff. Darren, we, we'll stay on after and myself, Una and Nicole can ask you um, some insider uh, gossip <laughs> and stuff like that. We'll not record it now. So. <laughs> but uh, Darren as well, thank you so much. And Darren, Nicole, Una, thanks so much for joining us today. And um, everyone, just to let you know, of course, if you have any questions, you can go back to our landing page or our homepage here for the virtual open evening and ask any questions you might have. Of course, we're always available online to answer your questions. Just go to IT Sligo ie forward slash cao you can contact us through email through messenger uh, and so on so you find all that information there thank you very much for joining us once again thanks to una nicole and darren and hopefully we'll see you all very soon take care thank you